We were traveling, we were in Italy, we were on a motorcycle trip, and we were eating gelato everywhere we went. We were visiting uh, Mount Erice in Italy, in Sicily. Uh, so we went up the mountain, this beautiful view, it's a beautiful place. We had a pistachio gelato, very simple, just kind of pistachios from Sicily, and it was delicious. And we thought, wouldn't this be fun if, if um, not only fun, but completely doable for us to get into the gelato business? And we had this kind of this moment where like, you know, it, it all clicked, you know, the gelato, the view, Italy, motorcycle, girlfriend. And it was extremely romantic. Thinking that we were going into this lovely, casual opportunity where we were just going to be happy gelato makers for six to eight hours a day and then travel in the wintertime. Um, I'm from Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, I came to Canada in 2002. 6th of January with a KLM flight at 4.55. I land, uh, landed to Canada. Um, I came here for studying uh, school. So I was going to university back home in Istanbul, uh, taking chemical engineering. And I got transferred to University of Toronto. So I came here to complete my studies. I started working in uh, an engineering company, Unilever, making Bessel margarine. But then, like when I started working, like you know, like, I, had a, I had a good career. I was making a lot of money. I had the weekends off. Like, like life was a little bit too easy, and I didn't feel like, like I was getting the most out of it. Uh, and like, my mind started wandering a little bit. And at that time, like Food Network was a bit big thing. Like you know, cooking was becoming a bit more interesting, I think. And I always liked cooking myself. And just one day in the New Year's, uh, I uh, like something clicked, and I just wanted to research this. And uh, and I made the I made the call, so I, I I applied for it. I graduated. I went to France. I worked in France for about a year and a half. We met in probably 2012 or 13, and we met at a bar where we both used to go after work on Harvard, called the Harvard Room. And I used to go there and sit at the bar and do work. And Kai would come in after his shift, and we just started talking about food. I worked at a few law firms over the last seven years. We both earned a decent income. We worked really hard, but nothing compared to how hard we work now. We ate in restaurants constantly. We traveled and spent probably all of our money on food and alcohol, good bottles of wine. We had a lot more time and um, we traveled quite a bit together and it was during our travels that we came up with the idea for the business. And then he ended up moving back to Toronto so we could start the business together. We encountered these Turkish entrepreneurs that had just opened a business and they essentially offered us rent inside their bakery cafe. So we thought this was perfect. Uh, so we decided to open up a business with, with very little money. And when I was looking for an ice cream machine, I was looking for an ice cream machine. Um, I accidentally bought a gelato machine. <laughs> but it was a great price, it was a fantastic machine, like we got a great deal. And I found out it's a gelato machine. It doesn't really make ice cream. It's not made to be uh, for to make ice cream. So I, I told Madalena, like, I bought a gelato machine. <laughs> and she's like, what's the difference? Well, there's all these differences. <laughs> I read and I bought a book on gelato. I bought a book on ice cream. I compared it because like I'm, I'm a chemical engineer. Like I know how, like, you know, I, I, I understood the difference. I'm like, because we actually called our company Death and Venice Ice Cream, in the, like, you know, initially, and then we had to switch to Death and Venice uh, Gelato. Most of my flavors usually have some kind of memory that's attached to it. So when we did the Pad Thai Gelato, that's, for example, that's my experience in, in Thailand. The, was it the mezcal, uh, mezcal gelato with uh, hibiscus? That was a memory from Mexico, the trip that we had like uh, six months ago. So some of the combinations definitely reflect my, my previous uh, travels. A couple of magazines picked up on it. We had a few articles written about us. But at the same time, the place that we were at, uh, they were struggling. And the cafe was kind of going down while the gelato was going up. They got it wrong. I don't know what the particulars, but they went out of business within six months. They got onto a plane, like, <laughs> they left. They went back home to Turkey. And there was no notice and no warning, and we were left 
um, in about June of 2016, having to make a decision of whether to leave or to stay. So we took over the space and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden we had gelato business coupled with a cafe business that uh, serves coffee, serves lunch. And we became a cafe owner, a gelato business owner and a, and a landlord in a matter of like a couple of months kind of thing. So it, it kind of happened really fast. Now, we never wanted to operate a cafe business. And to this day, I'm not sure if we made the right decision or not, because the business is open seven days a week from nine until nine o'clock at night. We're absolutely tied to it. I would much prefer the original arrangement in which we could just focus on, on the gelato. And we thought that when we were self-employed, we'd have a lot more time to travel. And if you're, you're our own boss, you could do exactly what you wanted, but it's not at all like that. We have so much more responsibility and pressure now. So things are just a little bit more, not as exotic and sexy as they used to be. We've got a child, we've got a business. We come home, we do bookkeeping and, and sit on the computer all night staring at statements and making decisions. It's, it's different. Now we're, we want to be like a, probably the best gelato catering company in Toronto. It's, it's lucrative, it's hard, uh, but uh, I like it because it kind of takes my company out of that little store. So even though there's, there's so much physical labor and it's dirty, sticky, sort of thankless, and it's, it's not an intellectual job, but it is a happy job and our customers return to us happy. They're largely enthusiastic. They're grateful and it's such a creative business to be in. So I love, I love catering, I love festivals, I love serving people. The pleasure that I get from doing a catering event where people are celebrating something or they're just happy and the enthusiasm and the feedback that we receive from people who are curious about the flavors is really rewarding. Honestly, scooping gelato is probably one of the funnest things I've ever done and just being part of this business has brought, I'll never regret it. It brings me a lot of pride and pleasure to participate in something that's so, it's fun, it's light. Everybody likes gelato, makes people happy, and that's nice.